Yo, I know, I know, I know I'm not going to be late. I just, I got to get this drone shot real quick. Dude, I'm not going to miss my first year as a full-time YouTuber. NAB, NAB ain't going anywhere. I'm going to be there. Bro, I don't know why they put the screen on the side. I don't know. I kind of like it. Whatever. I'll be there. One water of life for Mr. Cam Mackey here. Tastes like warm fish. Jason, did you see this? The LiDAR? Yeah, you were showing me. It's sick. Nope. All right. Anyway, this dude flew into a volcano. I'm still with this. I'm beyond excited for this. This is Condor Blues. Last question. When can I try it? That's a great one. <laughs> so they have the new Kados? Is that how you say it? Kados? Kados. Oh, that sounds way cooler. All right, guys. We literally just pulled up to NAB in the first booth we went to. Had to be Blazar. I'm on the screen over here. We had to come check out the Kados. These are 2X Anamorphics. You guys know how much I love the Blazar Remix because compact, a lot of character. Well, the Kados are now 2X and they're actually all the things. So like when you're shooting wide open, they're gonna be sharp, they're gonna be cleaner, but they're still gonna have all of the character that we love. And in their full frame, we're currently on the 50 millimeter Kato. We're wide open at T2 and you can see the edges. We're opening in the S5 2X. We're using the DJI LiDAR focus grip right now. You guys can see the size difference. They're not that big at all. This is crazy. I believe it's an 85 millimeter front, an 82 millimeter screw on, filter, super light. The flares are actually a little bit stronger, which I'm excited about. We got barrel distortion guys, blue flares, and they're not oversaturated. They're a little bit more organic looking too, if that even makes sense. Yeah, they got some hints of, uh, you know, a little, little bit of Panabize. Laser are just Panabize. Character on them. In, a, in well, a one eighth of the size. We actually had a dude come up and say, does that thing actually work? They're asking if this works? Yes. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, it does come. Anamorphic Jesus over here. He's uh, trying to light our autofocus. What do you think? I think this is finally what was supposed to be. What's your name? E. E. E came over and he's like, does it actually work? So we're letting him try it. Really impressive. Yeah. Is it a while? And it's on anamorphic mode, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's on spot 2X. Open gate anamorphic. So would you say it actually works? It does. Definitely does. He can focus by, by himself, right? Yeah. Oh, I like I like, I like it. What's your favorite part about the DI so far? Uh, I like the Avada too. I mean, I'm a big fan of the Avada in general. So just seeing it kind of in person here, it's, uh, it's kind of cool. This setup allowing people to actually fly is interesting as well. It's safely indoors. So, yeah. Has anyone crashed yet? No, oh, that's it. I would like to see them crash it. See, it's cool because he got out of Avada early. And I did it. Chris is going to do a bunch of videos on his channel for NAB, so I'll put a link down in the description if you want to go check out all his stuff too. This is pretty cool that they have all this set up over here. And then we have the Focus Pro hand unit over here. So they actually have the iris control on here. You guys saw in my video, we actually mapped the iris for the zoom because we're doing a lot of like Tarantino crash zooms. It's supposed to be for the iris, but you can see how smooth that is on there. You guys want to, you guys want to be in the video? Cody's getting it. Cody's in it. Guys, this is, this, this is the mastermind. When you see all my DJI videos, it's because of this guy. Okay, if you have any any hater comments, send it to Cody. And this is Vanessa, come on. Come on. This is Vanessa as well. And uh, you guys want to share anything? I didn't know Cody is camera shy. Is Vanessa yeah, camera shy? hope you get some good footage. They're camera shy. Right well. <laughs> yeah. and, and we got like 10 cameras on us right now too. This is the FX6 and the RS4 Pro. Doesn't that look weird? Just having an FX6 on here. Just again, a few years ago, it was a struggle just to get like a smaller camera under these gimbals. And now we're able to put like proper cinema cameras on there. So guys, this is the red Raptor. Wild. I didn't even know that this, that the RS4 Pro can hold this. That's crazy. Even though when the Red Komodo, Red Komodo X and the RS3 Pro, sometimes it was, it was hard to get it to clear like that. We shot a cowboy thing like a year ago. We had the RS3 Pro with the tilt to ring grip. And we literally, it, it halted the shoot for like two or three hours because we could not get the Red Komodo X to uh, properly balance because we didn't have the proper counterweights. So again, with this RS4 Pro, it's not just the Komodo X, it's now, you know, you can now rock the V-Raptor on here, which is just insane. I, I killed the motors, so if we let go of it, it's actually not perfectly balanced. Turn our motors back on here. We have 20% more power to the actual motors. So even though the weight capacity hasn't been increased, the uh, motors have been increased. So the fact that this isn't even like perfectly balanced and it's holding this up. Again, everyone's complaining like, oh, there wasn't like huge upgrades, blah, blah, blah. It's all these little things that were kind of getting in our ways on actual productions. All that has been kind of smoothed over and streamlined a little bit. That's where these upgrades really came from. Oh, hey. He said I couldn't, but I'm doing it anyways. He didn't say that. What's your favorite part in the DJI booth over here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. They were just raving about the Avada 2, so. Oh, yeah. That, I, mean, I was trying to throw you a softball there. Oh, oh, that was it. Okay, yeah, the Avada 2, and the people can actually try it out. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty easy to fly with that. 
Motion 3 that we just yeah. talked about. Like everyone can pick it up and just like bounce around and they... Yeah, it's wild. They have, it's like a cage to hold the drones and anyone can just come and fly them. I, I crashed like, it into a playground it. and just like... Fine. I wish I got one, but I did it. DJI. Uh, drone videos always fail. I know, that's why they don't send me any. <laughs> you guys gotta watch my fucking drone videos yeah, so I can get more drones video. from DJI. He will crash one for you. Yeah. It's like what, what, what people do with volcanoes. You guys. Now around a volcano where you have the hot gases in This dude flew into a volcano. I, this looks like it would hold a lot more than just RS4 Pro. You guys can see we're in a uh, New York bus station, train station. Not a bus, right? A train. <laughs> I'm from the West Coast, so we don't have trains. Thank Where's you guys. Train going? Was it quick enough? Wait, wait, wait. Where's this train going? Well, the never there it is. oh, there it is. That's oh, that's where we're going. Yeah. Right, go ahead, go pan, Connor. Actually, stops when you crash into a volcano. I'm most excited for here. I'm, I'm still in this. I'm beyond excited for this. This is Condor Blue's new map box. You guys know Condor Blue, they're filmmakers. And so when they design things and they create things, it's filmmakers created for filmmakers. Nuance thing, every little gripe that we have map boxes where it's like, why is the map box? Why does it have this? Why does it do this? Connor Blue fixes all those little things. Let's get into it. Shout out to Tucker. Tucker's the homie. It's cool because his latest filters have this metal frame around it. So a lot of times with NDs, you get fingerprints all over it and there's nowhere to really touch it. The slide out of your hand. You guys know who Brittany is. Channel, uh, Jesus. I'm gonna put her channel, a link in the description to her channel. Jesus. I'm gonna put a, just a link in the description to her channel. Is that what? That's it. What I love about the map box is, first of all, it already has like your descriptors of like what you, you know, what filters you have in it. Yeah. And this is gonna like help a lot of ACs too, yeah. you know, with their patches. So like the fact that you, it, I think it comes with these too, which is like I think dope, so, or yeah. you can buy them separately, yeah. but like knowing like what filters you have in your map box yeah. for continuity on multiple shots is great. And I love how like the easy to filters actually come on there. Yeah. Still small, so you can keep your rig kind of small. Yeah. Like the build of it overall is just beautiful to me. For me, I like keeping things small. It doesn't feel like too heavy. So yeah. I, I'm just, it, I, it I'm a map box like it, person. It's big just to be big. Some big ones out there, yeah. especially for a three stage. It even has like your balance. Like it's, yeah. it's so great. It's like how so annoying is it you go to your thing and you're like, why the fuck's the yeah, map box crooked? I, I, I'm i not gonna lie, a lot of times that, that'd that be like, I'm like a perfectionist. I'll be asking we're, my ACs, why y'all didn't just- guys, We're all, filmmakers are very particular. So when there's a little thing crooked, that doesn't even matter, it bugs us. Cause then it makes me think that the whole camera's crooked and I'm yeah. like, why did y'all just straighten the mat line? Yeah. Again, I'm gonna put a link to Brittany's channel down in the description. God damn, I said that right that time. All right, took, took enough times. Nick from Tilta. He's gonna walk us through. You guys saw like my budget Super 73 build for the cowboy shoot. Tilta came out with something way better, way more epic, way more advanced. I'm gonna have Nick go through everything. I'm to start looking at the, you know, maybe more foundational part of this. Uh, this is a custom designed 50 millimeter speed bracket for the specific model Super 73 bike. And the idea is with just a single piece of speed rail, we're able to adapt with our mounting clamps, kind of whatever else we need. You can see on the sides, we have these bolted on plates for additional pieces, add some triangulated support, and then essentially getting a piece of speed rail in a vertical position, similar to how you would if it was mounted to a tow hook or something. And then this is our brand new first look at the Hydra Alien Pro, which is a pretty beefed up version of the Hydra Alien, roughly twice the payload, roughly 30 pounds. And uh, as you can see, it is not just a mechanical shock absorbing arm, runs off two V-mount batteries, and it uses motors very similar to this RS4 Pro that it's mounted to in order to assist with the shock absorption, essentially mounting a gimbal to another gimbal to, to pretty much get some of the smoothest footage I think you'd be able to achieve with a setup in this size. So there, there's not too much information available at the moment, and some of this may be subject to change, but this is the direction we're going in for the next uh, Hydra Alien. I got a lot of questions. The isolator's mechanical, right? So these are like mechanical pieces. And then the motors, I'm uh, assuming are here. Th this looks like some alien technology. So the isolator, that's gonna take all those micro vibrations out. So you can see I'm shaking this, but when it comes to this motion, this is the live dampening then, correct? So basically live, when this is swinging around, this is gonna be able to read all that in real time and adjust the dampening. Is that accurate? 
Uh, yeah, close enough. I would say generally with a lot of our systems and most likely with this, the idea is to kind of like assist and, and help limit it. It definitely is not going to, you know, be 100% take out every okay. sort of uh, thing. But I, I think the idea is it's going to be kind of the next step from a mechanical system in terms of like the, the dampening is going to assist the natural stabilization of the arm itself. Okay. These are the electronic parts. This is still hydraulic, correct? There's no motors back here. There, there is, there is a motor built into this section, or at least in this this prototype. Um, th this one is not as I think significant because this is mostly just a you know spring arm system. It's like okay. this. I don't think you need to reinvent as much. Yeah. Um, and and the main issue I think a lot of people were running into with some of the other systems is that kind of side to side with yeah. it. Like if you don't have enough range of motion and it hits, it maybe yeah. is a little bit too far to. Uh, yeah. So when it's swinging really bad, there it's. It's got, there's some point where it's going to stop. There's like bumpers on it. But with this, I'm assuming as it's starting to get into its max swing limit, that dampening is probably going to kick in a little bit more and kind of push it. So you, do we have a price point? I mean, I can guess, but I do not know. I've not heard anything related to this. I, I think given that the Hydra Alien system was 1300 I I think a reasonable expectation would maybe be no lower than 2000 maybe 3000 maybe i don't know that we, we have been kind of surprising people with our prices recently yeah. um so don't hold me on that but if you were planning on something like this and expecting it to be the same price as the old one that probably will not be the case i would say two to three range feels fairly safe yeah there's no so guys the original one it works great that's all mechanical this is like totally this is different worldly type stuff here last question when can i try it <laughs> Amateur hour. Guys, look how strong he is. I have it rigged up to my inside and it transformed up into the blade. Look, he crashed like six feet up. One water of life for Mr. Cam Mackey here. Die Hamoud, brother, and water of life. Tastes like warm pit. Slide art? Yeah, you're showing me it's sick. Yeah, I love it. Say we're about to do something crazy. What do you mean crazy? I could just flip this around. Alright, well. So, say we want to do something crazy like that. This is kind of the perfect setup to do with minimum setup, and we just controlled it all from the camera. You, just gonna warn, you weren't going to warn anybody about that, eh? You were just going to just do that, dust all of my entire body. Just, just, okay, take me back to Canada. I'm going home. This is crazy. Where's the snow? Yeah, where's the snow? I think I'm ready for snow again. Cut. All right, guys. I'm finally back home from NAB. Just to wrap this up, I want to show you guys the stuff that uh, I got to bring home. First off, I want to say huge shout to Jin Yoon. They let me come crash the booth and let me do two workshops showing how, um, you know, I do lighting setups with their all like, you know, their whole full lineup. Their, their lights kind of help me be a little bit more creative with my lighting setups. And just to prove the fact, I'm actually using their lights right now. We'll go over that there later. Let's start with the obvious, the YC Onion um, new monopod. I honestly don't even know what this thing is called. Pinta, the Pinta Pro. The coolest thing about this though is, you see we have like a little pistol grip here. You squeeze the pistol grip and it's one action. That's all it is. You go all the way down. It's carbon fiber, so you know it's insanely light. One cool thing is too that the legs are actually uh, some of the largest monopod legs that I've seen before. Also, there's a tension. So when you loosen the tension and you loosen this, you see it's very loose. But if you put that tension up over, it becomes very stiff. It becomes so stiff to the point where, so you can see you have to fidget with it a little bit, but this is how far over leaned it is. Chris brought curse, Kofi and I, we went to a ghost town hour outside of Las Vegas and I ended up using this thing the whole time and all the guys loved it and they all end up filming some stuff on it because 
Uh, just this pistol grip just makes life so much more easier, especially for content creators. The elephant in the room is uh, this anamorphic flare in the shot. This is not the Blazar lens. We will go over those. This is a different anamorphic lens. Uh, we are on the DJI LiDAR Focus Pro grip and LiDAR and all that too. But next thing, PMI gave me their Smoke Ninja. You guys know I love their Smoke Genie. Uh, and I use it a lot. The Smoke Ninja is like the Smoke Genie light, I guess you could say. So the Smoke Genie, you know, there's a million different combinations that you could do with it. The Smoke Ninja kind of simplifies that where we just have a, a few different settings here. We have a fog setting, a dry ice, and a steam setting. So uh, you guys know I like to use this a lot for a haze. I'm gonna hit the remote. I'm gonna just take this over here. If you guys think your vape can do this, then go ahead and do it with it because it can't do this. And this doesn't smell like gross cotton candy nastiness. And it also doesn't look tacky, like all you vapors look like. Yes, those are fighting words. What's cool is it comes with these little attachment bits here. So I'm gonna lower the battery door down. You can either put a quarter 20 on there or you can put this magnetic strip on here. So you guys can see that's just hung up on a magnetic piece on there. We're back in autofocus. Now say if I needed more smoke, uh, say the haze is dying down, and you can see there's more smoke coming out of there. So this is gonna be great for my talking head stuff because a lot of the times I'm speaking for 30 or 40 minutes just rambling about nothing and I'm cutting everything out and my haze diffuses and then it looks inconsistent. Third thing here, this is the Move Max Pocket 3 arm. The clip before this whole segment, that was filmed with this. I did not set it up properly though. I didn't have my Core 20 for just the bottom Pocket 3. I only have the extended battery grip in the tilted cage, which adds more weight to it and then it made the top more wobbly. So I'll do a proper video showing how to properly set that up. I didn't do it right, but I just thought it was such a fun clip and we were in a rush, we were tired. It was like day four or five and uh, yeah, we were exhausted. But as soon as everybody saw this, everyone was like, uh, how do I get one? Might finally have the chicken nugget. If you guys don't know, I'm part of the Crater Crew. Crater's a new like uh, content type agency, I guess you could say. I was actually the first one that they signed on, I believe. Funded the whole trip and everything. And they teamed up with Lumix and we all got uh, brand new S52Xs. And I'm actually very, very, very excited for this camera because obviously, you guys know I shoot a lot of anamorphics, so now I can shoot a lot of open gate type stuff. This camera is giving us a lot of things that we keep asking every other brand to give us. Uh, Panasonic's already doing it in their camera, so maybe I'll do some dedicated videos on this. Uh, let me know in the comments. The new Blazar Kato's. You guys already know I'm gonna pump out a bunch of videos about these. This lens in comparison to the lens I'm about to show you, these feel like feathers compared to the lens we're using right now. The lens we're shooting on right now is all about trying to get the anamorphic look, but also still getting like modern usage if you're doing commercial stuff or you need to get vertical crop still of your of your anamorphic uh, you know quality. Uh, after trying this lens, you know I, I ended up kind of falling in love with it so much, especially for content creation. So you know pairing up this lens, it's a 1.33x uh, anamorphic. I guess I'll switch to the iPhone here. All right guys, so as you see, this is the Viltrox Epic Anamorphic 1.33x. We have it on the FX3 with the DGI Focus Pro LiDAR grip over here. And you can see it's doing its job. We're in autofocus mode. So this 1.33x anamorphic, this lens is hefty. Viltrox is going for quality over convenience. I don't know if you can see it on the iPhone, but in this lens is a bokeh mask. I closed down the aperture, and even though I closed down the aperture, you can still see the oval mask in there. What they're doing here is when you're wide open on this, it's gonna look more like a 1.55 or 1.6X uh, anamorphic. Just again, to tie this all up, again, I was doing workshops for June there. Here's my lighting setup. I have a June X60. I've at 3600 Kelvin, 100%, just bouncing off the wall. Again, I'm not doing anything crazy. Then back here, obviously we have practicals. And outside of my dirty window here, um, another X60 set to HSI mode and you know we're on blue and it's only at 44% and that was the light causing all of that flare back there. Anyways guys, um, yeah, that was my NAB and that was all the cool stuff I got to take back. There was even more, there's a lot of brands I wanted to go visit, but yeah, I'm super thankful for everybody that came up and said hi and took pics and just shared their stories with me. Hopefully next year, I'm gonna designate more time to just uh, enjoy that experience with you guys instead of me always on the go and in the rush. So anyways, that's it for my NAB. Peace.